Hello, student. I am Mrs. Obasi IP. I'll be taking you today on biology. This class is exclusively for SS1 students. Our topic today is irritability. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to 1. Define irritability or sensitivity as a cell reaction to its environment. 2. Explain the difference between stimuli and the receptors. And 3. State the types of a responses. Let us start with Definition. What is irritability? Irritability is the ability of a cell to detect and respond to changes in its environment. Again, irritability is the ability of a cell to detect and respond to changes in its environment. This is a basic property of the protoplasm and therefore a characteristic of all living organisms. To survive, a living organism must respond to its internal and external stimuli. This brings us to the question, what is a stimuli? What is stimuli? A stimuli is a change in the cell's environment that can make it change its activity. I repeat, a stimuli is a change in a cell's environment that can make it change its activity. External stimuli are caused by non-living or abiotic factors, that is, factors in the environment. Examples of such factors are change in light intensity, in temperature, in humidity, in gravity, in touch, in chemicals, etc. In animals, stimuli are detected by receptors, which also comes, brings us to the question, what are receptors? Receptors are special cells made of protein molecules which may be found all over the body or in special sense organs. I repeat again, receptors are special cells made of protein molecules which may be found all over the body or in special sense organs. Example, the nose, the eye, the skin, etc. In plants, protos Protoplasm of young cells in the shoot and root apex act as receptors. In plants, special organs in the root and the shoot apex act as a receptors. Example are in the cells, the cells in the leaves of the mimosa plant can detect a touch. Also, cells in the leaves of a flamboyant tree can detect changes in light intensity. Okay, so the receptors in plants are found in the shoots and shoot apexes. There are different types of uh, responses. There are different types of responses. We should also note that movements that are due to external stimuli are of different types. They can be nastic tropic or tactic eh, movement. Movement that are due to external stimuli can be of three different types. They can either be nastic movement, tropic movement, or tactic eh, movement. First of all, we'll talk about tactic movement, which can also be called eh, taxes.
What is tactic movement? What is tactic movement? Tactic movement is the locomotory movement of a whole organism or cell in response to directional stimulus. I repeat, tactic movement is the locomotory movement of a whole organism or cell in response to directional stimulus. What I mean here is that the direction of the response is related to the direction of the stimulus. The direction of the response is related to the direction of the stimulus. What we are saying here also is that the response is positive if the organism moves towards the stimulus and it is negative if the organism moves away from the stimulus. This kind of movement or this kind of response is carried out by such organisms as amoeba, euglena, paramecium, and some other unicellular organisms. It can also be carried out by the male sex cell, which are the sperm cells. That is the first type of movement or response, the tactic eh, movement. There are different types of tactic movements. There are different types of tactic movement. We have the phototaxis. When you hear phototaxis, it means directional movement of a whole organism to light. Directional movement of a whole organism to light. That is phototaxis. We have chemotaxis, which is also directional movement of a whole organism to chemicals. We have thermotaxis, which is the, which is the directional movement of the whole organism to a change in temperature. We have the hydrotaxis, which is the directional movement of the whole organism to water. The next type of response we want to talk about is the tropic movement or the tropism. The next one is the tropic movement or the tropism. What is tropic movement? Tropic movement is a directional movement of some parts of a plant. Tropic movement is the directional movement of some parts of a plant in response to stimulus. Again, tropic movement is the directional movement of some parts of a plant in response to stimulus. It is also known, it's also worthy of note that it is a slow growth movement and the direction of the response is related to that of the stimulus. It is a slow growth movement. The direction of response is related to that of the stimulus. That is, it is positive when it grows towards the stimulus and negative when it grows away from the stimulus. There are different forms of a tropical movement. We have phototropism, which is directional movement of some parts of a plant to light. Hydrotropism is the directional movement of some parts to water. Geotropism is directional movement of some parts of a plant to gravity. Galvanotropism is the directional movement of some parts of a plant to electric current. We have tigmotropism. Tigmotropism is the directional movement of some parts of a plant to touch. We have scototropism as the directional movement of some parts of a plant to shadow. We have chemotropism as directional movement of some parts of a plant to chemicals. Then we have rete Tropism, which is directional movement of some parts of a plant to pH or water current. The next kind of movement I want us to talk about, which is the last, remember I told you there are three types, is the Gnostic movement or Gnosticism.
Gnostic movement or Gnosticism. Gnostic movement, unlike the others, is a non-directional response of some parts of a stationary plant in response to external stimulus. I repeat, Gnostic movement or Gnosticism is a non-directional response of some parts of a stationary plant in response to external stimulus. Example, are changes in, te in light intensity, temperature, and humidity. All these are examples of Gnostic movement. Change in light, temp in light intensity, temperature, and humidity. Remember, it is a non-directional response of some parts of a stationary plant in response to external stimulus. Examples of Gnostic movement include 1. Closing of the morning glory flower when light intensity is low. Closing of the morning glory flower when light intensity is low, that's one example. Number two, sleep movement of leaflet of a flamboyant tree due to low light intensity. That's another example. The third example here is the folding of the leaflet of a mimosa plant when it is eh, touched. We have come to the end of the lesson. I have some assignments to give you. The assignments are 1. Define irritability 2. Differentiate between stimul stimuli and the receptors 3. List the three types of responses and explain briefly any two of them. Thank you for being here. Stay blessed and stay safe.